Hello everyone and welcome after a quick break. We have a talk about static typing in Python by Sanchit. So I would like to invite Sanchit to the stage now. Hey Sanchit, can you hear me? Yes, Sashank, I can hear you. Hello everyone. Great, I can hear you as well. And uh, yeah, feel free to start and let me know when uh, you want me to share the video. Yeah, you can go ahead. Sure. So, okay, I'm just trying to set up the video and uh, because of network issues, we are trying to do this uh, pre-recorded talk. So Sanchit will be present with us for all the questions. Feel free to ask Sanchit any questions that you have anytime we'll make sure that Sanchit gets your question after the end of this talk. Okay, so you have the hop in chat, feel free to put the questions there. And uh, you just stay there. I'm just just a few more seconds. And yes, we have the talk right here on the stream. Nice. I guess you can see the talk. And uh, here we go. Hello everyone, uh, this is Sanchit and uh, I hope you all are having very good time. I'm also very excited to be here. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to thank PyCon India 2020 team for giving me the opportunity to present this talk. So as you can see in my title that I'm going to talk to you about a static typing in Python. So without further, further ado, let's get started and uh, see what's the agenda. So, Primarily, I'm going to actually try and set some context about typing and uh, we will understand that what are the different type of typings available in Python and uh, why do we actually need static typing at all and uh, because Python is a dynamically typed language and people love uh, Python for uh, uh, this feature and uh, once we understand that how static typing works, we'll also understand that how do we start to type Python code and then we will jump on to see that uh, what are some of the complex types available uh, in Python's typing module, which we can use to actually uh, start to type our legacy or large code bases. Then we'll also uh, see one important tool called uh, type checkers. So I'm going to primarily talk to you about uh, MyPy, which is one of the most popular uh, type checkers available at this moment. And then we'll end the talk with some pros and cons of static typing. But uh, one uh, disclaimer I want to give that I'm going to talk to you about some of the basic stuff as well. So in case you are aware about some of the basics, uh, please bear with me. I will be covering because there are some um, some people who may not uh, know some of the initial concepts as well. Okay. Okay. Without um, um, before moving forward, let's also um, let me just quickly talk about uh, myself. So uh, as I said, my name is Sanchit and I'm primarily uh, working as a lead software engineer at EPAM India. And uh, I'm very passionate about uh, open source communities and Python and especially about Docker. And um, I'm a very community centric person. I have been working with communities from last almost three to four years. I helped run a couple of communities uh, that are called uh, Hyderabad Python user group and also DevOps and SRE user group Hyderabad. And uh, I'm happy to talk to you about anything with regards to open source communities, Python, Docker, or about, uh, especially about HypePy and Research Hyderabad. And you can find me on my social handle, which is Innovis. Uh, I'm available on Twitter, LinkedIn, and GitHub. So feel free to reach out to me. I'm happy to get connected. So uh, let's get started with the talk. So uh, let's revise some concepts like static typing, dynamic typing, and etc. So here what we see that this is a basic example of uh, static typing okay so i i chose to use uh, c code because that is a very fam familiar language for all of us so essentially there is a function called main and uh, there is a variable called uh, age here which is typed as int okay so age can only accept integer values right so and i'm trying to print that particular variable here so essentially i mean that's how you started type your code that your uh, compiler would know that uh, before runtime itself that uh, there is something 
college, which is supposed to be an int value, right? So in case you try and assign some string value or other type of value, you will end up having an error here. So that's how basically a static typing scenario would work. Let's also understand what is dynamic typing. Let's start, try and revise that. So this piece of code is primarily written in Python 2.7. Uh, you can ignore that because uh, typing is primarily available in uh, 3.5 plus. But let's understand this piece of code. There's a function called foo here, which has two conditions. Uh, if a is greater than zero, then do something. And if um, in the else part, do something, right? So essentially, when I'm trying to call, let me also uh, actually uh, include the pointer so that it I can actually navigate and help you understand. So now when I call the function called foo here, right? Uh, by passing the argument called to, this guy goes here and the function and the condition gets fulfilled and it prints high, okay? It gives me high as an output. So um, this line doesn't get executed, which means that this type checking of this line is not happening when I'm running this function. Okay. So that's how the static, the dynamic typing things work here. But when I call foo of zero, that is where the condition gets failed and then, then tries to actually evaluate the type of it, which means if it is not being called, I mean, if, this is, if it is not being evaluated, the type is also not going to be checked. Okay. So that, that's the beauty of uh, dynamic typing that you don't have to define the types. Uh, you may have some bugs in your code with regards to type uh, of the objects or uh, the variables, but uh, you don't have to write that specific code by defining the specific type of a variable, etc. So just a quick reminder about how does the dynamic typing thing works. There is one more concept called uh, duck typing. Okay. There is a saying called if, if it quacks like a duck and if it walks like a duck, it is probably a duck. So I'm trying to actually um, replicate the same scenario here. Uh, there is something called a class as duck, which has a method called fly. Then we have something called a bird, which is again a class, and it also has a method called fly, right? And uh, in the end, I'm trying to actually uh, iterate through both of these uh, classes and trying to call the fly method, right? But uh, what you see here is that uh, Python is not worried about that uh, what is my class type, right? It is also, it is only looking about uh, whether the fly method, which is available here or not. If it is not available, uh, then it may give me an error, but uh, it is never going to be worried about that. What is the type of that particular animal item here? Okay. So that's how I, uh, duck typing also works. So uh, till that, till this time, I want to actually uh, just do a quick revision of how, how static typing, dynamic typing and typing works let's quickly understand the why should we actually care about types right uh, why types are important i mean as we see you saw in that uh, uh, initial example right that you define your tribes and then you will end up having uh, not those confusion later on so you can see what i'm trying to say that uh, python is a uh, dynamically typed language right? that you don't have to spend too much of time writing those types and define things right but what will happen that let's say if you um, go towards a very large code base or uh, your uh, code is getting multi-layered sort of thing, then you will end up having tough time figuring out those uh, bugs or issues wherein uh, there is some data flow happening and you are uh, having tough time to figure out that what this particular argument is about and from where this particular person is or argument is being called or function is being called. So those type of scenario which, um, which can occur Definitely Python is a beautiful language and it also has this beautiful feature called uh, dynamic typing, but it also has some cons, right? So we'll also talk about those cons as well that, um, but I'll talk about the cons of static typing essentially, but dynamic typing also has some cons. So if you, if you probably, probably are from uh, the world of Java or from uh, other languages, you will understand that um, if you have your code uh, statically typed, it helps you actually um, uh, find out the bugs much, much uh, before if it goes to production. So that's, I think that's why we should care about uh, types. Let's move forward and understand that uh, with an example of example. So there is an example I've written, uh, a very basic example. There's a function called do something, which primarily has uh, uh, four arguments here, something called user class, client, retry count, and data, right? And I'm trying to import my user class uh, from the my module uh, module, right? So what you see here is that um, there are a bunch of arguments, but uh, let's say if this, this uh, whole stuff, 
is available probably in a uh, legacy code base and you are, you are supposed to fix a bug here okay you'll end up having a very tough time finding out that uh, where these arguments are defined and what are the type of and what do, what do i expect from these okay maybe there is some code uh, but you'll end up having maybe have, have a tough time to figure out those issues right so that is why static typing becomes very important and uh, um, so what you'll do maybe even before you don't think about static typing you will actually find try and find out that uh, if there are any doc strings available maybe you will try and search for doc string and uh, try and see that uh, if you can make out something with that or uh, in the other case you may also try and find out if there are test cases available okay um, with the help of test cases you can figure out that how how the code is working or you may also have some bunch of other hazard statements right so these all scenarios are there and possible wherein you can use those things to understand the code but still uh, there is a possibility that you will end up having uh, debugging the code and reading the whole uh, piece of code base just for a single line of fix right so these are all, all possible scenarios and it's uh, it can be a tough it can give a tough time to a developer who's new to the code or probably working on a, a very large code base so that's why i think static typing becomes very important and uh, so once you actually write the same code with type annotations okay which was introdu introduced in uh, pep 484 483 i think uh, if you um, static type your code using this way right so what will happen that you have your uh, same function do something it has an argument called user object then we have client we have um, retry count and data but it clearly specifies uh, using, the, using the typing modules uh, uh, types available so i'm trying, trying to import uh, list tuple dictionary and set from a, a module called typing which is natively available in python 3.5 plus okay if you use that you can actually specify that what a specific argument type is about so now if you want to start to type your code you can just apply a colon on top of your uh, beside your uh, argument and you can define your uh, uh, your uh, type here okay the same thing i'm doing here i'm saying that user object is primarily um, a user class and client is primarily a dictionary of um, string as a key, uh, key and list as a value. A retry count is basically an integer and the data is basically a tuple. And ultimately, using an arrow sign, I can specify also that uh, it is going to return a set of integers. Okay. So essentially, it is helping me to understand the code right away and help understand that uh, uh, what do I need to do about these arguments. If there is something which is happening in my code and some bug is there i can that can primarily help me understand those things and uh, in my personal opinion also uh, it's subjective but, uh, but it's my personal opinion that rather than writing doc strings if you write uh, static type uh, your code right it becomes much more cleaner and easy to understand okay with those long long uh, doc strings wherein you define your uh, specific argument and order example etc but if you write these doc strings right it becomes very much easier to understand and it and in any way it's going to help you uh, figure out those bugs much uh, much before i'll talk about that how does uh, this uh, thing can help but uh, before we move forward uh, i also need to set one uh, set one example here that uh, uh, static typing in python is not uh, actually natively implemented right python is still a dynamically typed language and uh, static typing is available as an optional uh, thing okay so we can use static typing but uh, it's optionally available i'll talk more about this probably later in this session let's let's also try and understand more on the static typing front and then we'll come back to that part so let's see that there is another example called uh, there's a function called get employee first name primarily it is taking an argument wherein uh, i'm passing a name and then returning the name after doing the split of it then there's a dictionary called dummy name wherein i have first name and the last name then we have a user input which basically takes the input from the user and then try to return the first name by calling that specific function here right and in case the first name is not passed here it basically call the same function again passing the dummy name okay and then if i try and uh, in the end i'm trying to print hi sanchit so basically if i uh, pass my uh, name here as sanchit balsandani so it is going to print the first name of my name that's going to be sanchit so it will say hi sanchit okay so uh, the code looks fine but there's a bug okay 
and what is the bug here uh, so essentially if you see if i don't pass anything here in the please provide your name if i don't pass any anything here in this input what will happen that uh, that this condition would be true and now the function would be called as uh, get employee first name with the dummy name and dummy name is essentially a dictionary okay and uh, dictionary doesn't have the split method so it will fail that's what is happening here right so it is possibility that uh, if i don't do that test case of passing an empty value i won't catch this bug at all right and this this code may go to production okay and maybe after that sometime uh, it may break because of this input so how do we catch these bugs so you can see that there is an uh, error error stack, uh, track, uh, stack trace coming and it's saying that attribute error uh, dict optic object has no attribute called split that's why it is failing that line number 2 okay so how do we fix this bug i mean we can fix that bug just by using uh, typing as i said uh so you can use uh, the typing module you can say uh, from typing import uh, dict you can specify your dictionary here you can also specify uh, arguments in your uh, uh, function you can say that name is always going to be a st string value and return type is also going to be a string value but important thing is that i'm going to also also uh say that uh, my uh, user input is also string and first name is also string right but eventually uh, this would make it, make our life easier so when i'm saying the name has to be an str value that means a string value so whenever this this condition fails if not first name and i try and pass uh, the dummy name which is a dictionary i'll end up having that error in my type checker okay so that can save my save my life and i i would uh, i would uh, know about that particular bug before hand itself so how can i do that you just have to actually use that uh, static type checker let's say if you use mypy and you run that file called mypy 1.py you will end up having that error saying that uh, uh, get employee first name function has an incompatible type called uh, dictionary of str and str but expected type is str okay so that's how you can easily find out and validate uh, whether there is a bug or not okay so these are some of the basic examples uh, let's also talk about uh, that how do you uh, annotate the variables i think we also had an example in the previous one but let's also understand that how how, how does the variable and function annotation works so again very basic example then we have something called uh, function called odd numbers and odd numbers primarily have uh, numbers as an argument which is basically a list and it also returns a list as an argument okay but essentially if you see that i am trying to actually say that my odd variable is basically a list of integers and then i'm trying to append something in odd so if i try to append something which is not an integer and if i run through this whole code using mypy type checker i will definitely have an uh, error saying that you are trying to uh, append which is not a integer value okay so these are the things i think your uh, your variable annotation also the function annotation that can help you figure out those bugs much ahead of your time okay so this one would help you understand that how these things work uh let's also understand that what are the some different, different complex types and why i'm talking about these complex types because uh, once you try and it start uh, implementing static typing right you'll also have uh, opportunity to opportunities to work on uh, large code bases or or scenarios wherein um, uh, the type uh, uh, return types of functions or uh, uses of those things are kind of little complex so typing module provides a very comprehensive different types i'm going to cover only a few of them today but uh, you can feel feel free to reach out to uh, uh, and probably uh, look at uh, a typing module and understand that um, uh, how many different types are available so let's talk about few of them today so there is one thing called uh, union type okay and it's very uh, important and also very common uh, if you work on large code bases what will happen let's say um, there are two uh, functions here one is do something one and one is do something two both are accepting one argument called arg1 arg1 and arg2 arg1 is basically an integer value arg2 is basically a uh, string value but uh, why i'm trying to actually specify union that you may have a use case wherein uh, you are not sure that uh, what type of uh, what type of argument or what type of uh, type you're going to return it can be class a it can be class b uh, and this class class a and class b are just an example here it can be any other thing you are not sure about uh, a return type of your uh, function it can either return a dictionary of uh, um, some values or it can either return a set or tuple so no matter everything is going to be an object so 
um, it's up to you and uh, according to use case but uh, if there is a use case wherein you are not sure about uh, uh, what's going to be the return type so you can keep that thing in the union uh, type mention that uh, it can either be class a or class b okay this is probably a bad example i'm using classes as an as an uh, return type it should either be objects but let's assume that these are all the, um, objects so either class a or class b would be returned from this function okay so type checker would understand uh, if your function is probably uh, well written it has uh, a return type as class a or class b so it will understand that it is a correct implementation it's also possible that um, my class or my function would return none in some cases so you can use uh, none as one of the arguments in the union okay uh, let's also look at optional type okay what's optional type uh, since we talked about union and also we uh, had uh, none in one of the argument in the union type so uh, typing module actually supports that natively and in, in cases wherein you have uh, one of the argument as none so uh, you can use optional here. So what I what you see in, in this example that there is something called handle employee, and the argument is primarily e here, which is saying that it is optional of employee. So it can be optional or it can be none as well. So you don't need to define those. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, default values. It can come as none. So depending upon that, you can uh, write your code and and help. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean uh, you can you can actually write the code and and try and follow the logic. But optional would help you uh, uh, have that thing natively available. So you don't need to actually ha have a union of employee and none. So Python natively provides, uh, I mean, the typing model natively provides an optional type, which you can use. And that will automatically understand that there can be a, a none coming up here. OK, they can be a none. It can, they can also be uh, an employee, but they can also have a none as well. So that's an optional type, uh, also very handy and useful. There is one more thing called any type. This is very very important because a uh, lot of time you will not you will not be sure about the type of uh, of any particular object. So in that case, you can use any type. Uh, it can be of any type, and uh, it can it can have any type of function. But it's not going to be a built-in. Okay, it's not going to be a comparable to a built-in. But uh, any type of object you create, you can actually have that as an any of type of uh, type from typing module. So again, similar example that you have something called do something. And arg is basically a dictionary of uh, uh, key is a dictionary and value can be anything. It can be any type of object, be it a, a list or a tuple or a set or any custom object. So it doesn't matter. You can just mention any here. So for a lot of cases, if you have to fix, right, once you actually start implementing your uh, uh, started typing in your legacy code basis, I I ended, I ended up uh, using any type at a lot of places because if you're not sure about something, you can use that. But uh, it is always good to specify that uh, what that uh, specific type would be. But any can be your, um, uh, I mean, um, can can be your go-to thing if you don't uh, if you're not sure about any specific type. Let's also understand uh, uh, how do we implement that typing instead of typing. So there's something called sequence available in Py, uh, in uh, typing module. So similarly, I mean, the, like I spoke about uh, that typing right, that uh, if there is a method available, which means that if there is an uh, iter method available you can uh, available it's all, also available in in list type and also available in uh, sequence type so that's why i'm, I'm able to actually uh, iterate through uh, the sequence of load and it works well right so uh, that's basically an example of duct typing so um, basically if as i said that if, if uh, uh, fly method was available in both duck and bar classes it was working fine right similarly in the case of sequence also if uh, it has a data method, you should be able to iterate through it. Right? So you can use sequence if it is required in any of the cases. Let's also uh, talk about generics. So uh, if you are probably from Java background, you may also be familiar with the generics. OK, so you can write the, the generic types. So I'm trying to create a generic type here and passing it as a uh, uh, another thing in the calculator class. So what will happen that I have something called item one, which is an, uh, one type, and then have item two, another type. So Ultimately, uh, the return type is also the generic. Okay, but uh, it depends on me that if I have if I'm passing one and two here uh, in the cal calculator uh, class object, so I can do an add function and add method by passing one and two. But it'll it'll work for me right? because I'm trying to create a generic. Here. That's how the generic concept works. I'm not going to explain that how generic works, uh, generics work. But uh, essentially, you can try and 
uh, create generics using that typing Python. I mean, natively it is not available in Python, but using the help of uh, typing module, you can create those generics and it will give you the same scenario, which basically is available in other languages. So I'm creating a, uh, a generic and passing the, the argument as one and two, and it'll end up having the three as an output because uh, the type is, uh, uh, is kept as uh, uh, generic. And similarly, I can also use uh, 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 str here and pass as a generic type and it will end up having my uh, string concatenation. So a very good example to understand that uh, using this way you can implement generics. And especially when you work on those uh, uh, multi-layer architecture, you have your interfaces, etc. It is very handy to have uh, these things av uh, available. So this is about generics. Now, uh, since we under understood about that how static typing works and how do you implement static typing along with some of the complex types, these are some of the static type checkers available, primarily MyPy, PyRe, and PyType. MyPy is primarily um, um, is in, in your uh, uh, Python, uh, C Python, Slab, GitHub. And also PyRe is from, I think, from uh, from Facebook, and PyType is primarily from, from uh, Google. But uh, Py, MyPy is the most popular one, which was uh, developed, I think, at Instagram. So let's understand that how do you use MyPy. I think I already gave an example of how does MyPy work, but let's also understand quickly again. You can just quickly install MyPy using pip install MyPy. And any script you want to actually run through, which is already statically typed, you can just say uh, MyPy script.py. Once you say that, uh, so you'll end up having those uh, uh, those errors. So I'm just trying to show another, another example. Let's say this is, this is a function called myfunk. And it has a statically type thing, and you try and pass uh, ten value, which is idly accepting an integer value, sorry, string value, but I'm passing an integer value. I'll end up end up having those errors here, right? So it says that argument one to my function has an incompatible type calling. So that's how the the mypy uh, type checker is going to give you the errors beforehand. That's how that you can use my uh, type checking in mypy, and uh, there's also something called monkey typing. Uh, so once you actually work on um, uh, legacy code bases, which are not statically type checked, and uh, you would not want to actually spend a lot of time to uh, type check those code or add annotations, you can use this project called monkey, monkey typing, which can generate stubs for you. So I would recommend you to use uh, to read more about uh, monkey typing on this on this link, which I'm going to share in my slides. So essentially, it is going to uh, generate stubs, and uh, using those stubs, you can apply annotations on your uh, legacy code base that will help you start to type your code uh, and essentially the, your uh, uh, your legacy code which is already written but not statically typed and i would recommend if you are uh, writing your new code you should start writing that uh, type code from the scratch so uh, yeah so i, I was uh, so how do you approach static typing so essentially if, if your uh, project is very new you can 100% uh, you can use uh, uh, static type code because it's going to help you a lot with regards to finding out bugs um, later on and you should definitely include that in CI. So any type checker you can, as I was talking about like MyPy or Pyre or uh, uh, others, you can use those in your uh, CI uh, so that uh, before things are go going up, I mean, before your test cases are being run, your type checkers can actually run and understand and help you figure out those uh, bugs beforehand. Else, if your, code, if your project is not new, it's a, a legacy code base or a very large code base, uh, we are, on which you are supposed to apply uh, static typing, you can either use monkey typing, as I uh, spoke about, because that is going to help you to generate those annotations uh, uh, automatically. Uh, and also, you can actually, uh, when you're working in the large code base, when you're working in the new code, right, you should actually uh, try and start type your code. Because gradually, if you can build up your uh, start typing, it will help you in the longer term. And uh, again, you should definitely uh, implement the CA also for the for the, uh, for the the large, large projects or the older projects. And uh, I would recommend that you should start using uh, static typing only for those piece of uh, of your code which are kind of most commonly used, so that the bugs are kind of uh, 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 can, can be uh, can be little less. Okay, so the, uh, I would recommend these approach if you are uh, planning planning to use static typing in any of your project. Um, yeah, so uh, let's also talk about uh, pros and cons before ending the talk. So. As I said in the start, that uh, static typing is definitely going to help you to document your code. It makes your code much, much cleaner. And it also helps you uh, write less tests because uh, those basic data flows wherein you are trying to test whether a function accepts an integer value or a string value, those type of tests can automatically be eliminated because you're going to implement static typing and type checkers are going to take care of that. Okay, 
and as we have been talking that uh, you can catch those bugs beforehand for sure and uh, refactoring also when you are probably coming back to the same code after let's say two years the refactoring of your code would also be much much easier because you're going to use static typing and it is going to make your life easier but yeah certainly there are some cons as well so let's also talk about those cons uh, definitely once you import typing module right uh, it's going to come up with some uh, import time it's going to add some um, um, uh, uh, slight delay there but yeah that, other than that that's understandable because uh, typing is also a heavy module and there are a bunch of things being imported so every time when you do an uh, from from typing import this a lot of uh, things gets imported so that's a, a downside and also definitely i mean um, since i mean python is dynamically typed that you don't have to actually add a lot of types at this moment but once you start working on your stop static typing you have to spend time you have to understand uh, that what's the type of going to be for a specific function or return type or an argument so those all things kind of take a lot of time and uh, if you are working in your legacy code base and trying to uh, generate disturbs uh, those things i think i think kind of add a lot of duplicate files you may not want that uh, things to be there because it uh, it makes a uh, it makes your code base a little mess but yeah i mean if you definitely want to implement typing i think stubs are also on monkey typing is also one of the good way to do that so they are they are taking two sides of the two sides of the coin always right that there are some pros and cons available as well so i think with that i think i can i would like to conclude um, that uh, you should definitely try start typing it's definitely very very helpful and especially for uh, new projects i would recommend using uh, typing and uh, uh, you can explore uh, these things i i have referred some of the blogs and also some of the videos you you can actually go here and uh, understand uh, these are some of the good uh, videos and blogs i found uh, i'm open for any q and a thank you hello everyone uh, thanks sanjit for the great talk and uh, i can understand that it was recorded because of obvious network issues and for those who are asking about the link to the video uh, rest assured that we will get the entire video that you are seeing right now not that video but this entire stream with the q and a and everything and we'll post it on youtube so you follow icon india on twitter and all the other social platforms that we have and uh, when when it comes to the presentation that's the presentation that sanjit was using uh, sanjit will share it on zulip later on and uh, over to you sanjit we have some questions let's quickly take some of those questions yes. question number 1 is this do we have to use typing for example can we use list instead of list and dist dict instead of dict capital d and capital l yeah so the, those uh, uh, classes which are available in typing module which starts from capital l and capital d these are specific to typing module uh, you should not compare it with available uh, default native uh, cl classes like list and dictionary uh, you cannot use them in compare to the native ones the second question is does type static typing che uh, checking slow down program execution yes it does up to some extent so i would recommend that you can use some performance tool or uh, you can also use the uh, of time tool available uh, to check that how much uh, time it takes but definitely it comes with some downtime i mean it comes with some uh, some uh, time so whenever you do import typing it certainly going to take some time uh, but yeah there are some cons available of type typing as i talked about in my con slide but yeah there is some benefits as well so in case you can actually um, uh, manage those uh, times so you should use static typing for sure right we'll take one last question because of obvious time constraint and the last question is would not using any uh, that is capital l they really defeat the purpose of type checking sorry capital a yeah so uh, yeah so i think you are partially right that any if you're using any so as i said that you should be uh, cognizant about using any type you should first of all try and find out that what's the type is about and then you should uh, use that specific type but yeah in case you're not able to find out any specific type of an object which you are uh, not sure about then in that case typing modules provide you this way of using any as well so okay. yeah it's up to you and also also very dependent on the use case here you are trying to implement thank you sanjit and uh, rest assured for rest of the questions sanjit will be present on hopin chat as well as on julep chat that is 2020 forward slash stage forward slash delhi so make sure you subscribe to that stream sanjit will be present there for all your questions and he will reply to the questions on hopin chat which are still present there so thanks a lot sanjit thank you